Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam, so here I'm just flying the DJI Mavic Mini and whoa! It's not supposed to fly like that! What? How is this possible? Well, oh that's right, I did completely remove all the DJI guts except for the motors and I put in high performance FPV drone electronics to make it fly like a racing drone but what if I told you that what really makes it fly like this is this little part right here. This tiny part is called a propeller lock and it's supposed to keep the stock folding propeller blades from folding. You see, because the higher voltage batteries, three cell instead of two cell, and racing drone electronics and firmware that I'm using, the motors are spinning much faster than they were ever designed to in this configuration. And since the blades are allowed to rotate freely, this causes the propeller blades to lag behind the motor when the flight computer tells them to speed up or slow down. Basically, this confuses the flight computer and results in the drone being very unstable. And this is where the propeller lock comes in. All this really is is a little piece of plastic that gets wedged between the two propeller blade hubs. It adds enough friction to keep the blades from moving freely, and the half moon shape creates a hard stop to keep the blade movement to a minimum. However, to maintain balance, the propellers are just loose enough to allow the centrifugal force of the spinning motor to align the blades naturally. I have the STL files available on rcwithadam.com for you to 3D print yourself, but the blue ones you see here came from our sponsor for this video, PCBWay. You probably know PCBWay for their custom printed circuit boards, that's what PCB stands for, but they also offer rapid prototyping services to include CNC machining, sheet metal bending, injection molding, and what I use for this project, 3D printing. Honestly, it is super easy process to order 3D prints from PCBWay. Basically, you just go to PCBWay.com, go to rapid prototyping and 3D printing, drag and drop your model design file, usually an STL for 3D printing, then select the quantity, material, paint, dyes, or finishes, if applicable, and any other special technical details if you have a more complex model. In this case, I didn't need any of the extra stuff. Side note, I printed this in a glass fiber nylon, and it turned out to be too stiff and brittle for this job. I probably should have chosen a PETG or something with a little bit more flex and resilience. Then hit submit request. It will give you an estimated price and once an engineer has actually reviewed your order to make sure it can be done as requested, you'll get an update with the actual price. PCBWay usually ships via DHL and takes two to three weeks to get to me in the USA, which I think is pretty good, all things considered. If you think this would help you with your next project, I'll have a link to PCBWay down in the description below this video. Now, just to give you an idea of the actual difference that this little propeller lock makes, I'm going to give you a side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, a little hover test that I did. Now, granted, this does have the uh, camera, the third-person view camera mount that I put on there, um, which is super not ideal for, for flying this, actually. It's, it's really quite awful, but uh, we'll kind of, you'll, you should be able to see the difference. I think it's much more controllable with the propeller locks and was actually able to fly decently, whereas it was, it was really kind of all over the place and uncontrollable without them. And you see, I know that this is the difference between this thing being able to fly as an FPV drone with these, uh, with these stock motors and everything, because when I was originally doing this project a couple years back, that was the main problem. Got it working, it was flying, but what I noticed was if you made sudden changes to the motors, it would start making this weird like clacking sound. Oh yeah. 
It really doesn't like going fast and then slow. At first I thought that the clacking sound was the propellers for some reason hitting the frame, but then I started thinking, just designed a super simple little thing right here by basically making the two circles for where, where the props were. So I measured you know, the distance between the props and then printed it on the Ender 3. And that's pretty much all I needed to do. So there you have it, folks. That's the secret behind the DJI Mini FPV sleeper drone that I built. If you want to see how I actually built that drone uh, and the results of that, you can go check out a couple videos. I'll have a links, links down in the description to those. I made a couple different ones. One was how I built it, and then the other one was just kind of showing the super fast version of how I how I built the whole thing. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, get out there and fly something. Be creative. Go try building something and probably crash it. And uh, I'm going to leave you with some flight footage. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bars in our goggles.